Warning. That schoolhouse is only here for one reason, to show that this is where children used to be. And all the terror and fear and all these different children who pass through those halls. And I laid my hands on the barn like this and I'm like, oh my God, I could see the beatings, the abuse. The children were literally flipping caged in like wired things. I see a little girl just stand in there and she'd go like this. Why don't you watch your language? There's something on down here in the gym. Are you a little girl? <gasps> Good evening, and welcome to an episode of Paranormal Encounters. I'm your host, Connor Biddle, and for tonight's episode, we are being locked down in Maxwell, Iowa's most haunted location for our elementary. Elementary school opened its doors in 1922, but forever closed them in 2002. With no nearby civilization, the schoolhouse sits eight miles from any civilization in a town once called Farrar, just south of Maxwell, Iowa, its new hometown address. But don't be fooled by the word schoolhouse, it's known to have poltergeist activity, in which claims the students still roam its halls. From his dark and mysterious past, claims that the Ku Klux Klan burned across in the front yard to his past of abuse and molestation on its former students. Well, one morning, about 11 o'clock, um, this light was on and I was coming up from the gymnasium, and as I stood, came around the corner, I stood right here, and I saw, standing right about at those steps, the figure of a little boy. Oh, I've seen a few things there that made me wonder, but when I would, I used to live over here on the school grounds, and when I would close up at night, I would find the gym lights on downstairs that I could see. Well, I was sure I turned them off, but obviously I didn't. But, uh, and there were other times that it sounds like people were walking around downstairs. Our very first visit here, we were down in the gym here doing EVP work, and two of our female investigators, they saw two balls of light shoot out from the boiler room across down into the, like, the laundry room down there. Balls of light shooting there. Then later on, one of our investigators were down here, since there's allegations of child abuse in the school here, um, and the chair here was against the wall, so one of our investigators says, have you ever been put against the wall? Have you ever been put in timeout? And you can hear clear as day, like a 12, 13 year old kid say, or worse. What happened to you? Something or worse. So you, you can tell something, something bad happened to the kids here. I mean, that's, that's the clearest EVP that we've ever got out of this place, the or worse. Anybody get in trouble in here and have to, have to face the wall, get put on timeout? Face the wall, get put on time out. We're in here and I started feeling really, really angry. I never get angry on investigations. I never really let anything make me angry. And um, it, Tim DeWight's standing next to me and I'm like clenching my fist trying not to hit him. 
I don't, I was scared. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know what was coming over me. But maybe, aggression. yeah, I, I felt like I was the most angry person in the world. For whatever reason, I was drawn to just turn and look down this way. And for whatever reason, I just started looking at the DVR camera and I started smiling and just like this big grin. And I just started like really listening to what they were saying and it just, it made me laugh. Like I was like, wow, these two are pathetic at what they're saying. And I started thinking more aggressive things towards them and the smile got bigger and bigger and bigger. I decided to figure out what was going on with me. I consulted my, I talked to my mom. I was like, Mom, do I go to counseling? Do what, what do I do? I was like, this is not me. And I mean, I got emotional and I decided to go see a spiritual healer. She had asked me what I did. I told her paranormal investigator. I didn't even mention anything about this school yet. And she just kind of, you know, Katie, I feel that this has something to do with what's going on with you. Before we made our way to the storage closet, Katie felt uneasy about having her interview in it especially with what we were about to capture on our camera's audio. Now note that Katie is the only one wearing a mic pack, so all the audio source is coming from her. And I laid down, and the minute she put her hands on my shoulder to connect with me, she said, were you in a storage closet at that school? And I said, yes. And she goes, well, whatever spirit was in there has connected with your energy, and he's not a nice spirit. And... Yeah. If you listen very closely to the audio, you can hear what appears to sound like a pounding or a walking from the floor above that interrupts our interview with Katie, followed by some disembodied, unexplained breathing that was breathing into her mic. He's not a nice spirit. And... Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Oh. Sounded like something's running upstairs. We just got that on camera. Yeah, I just heard a... Do you have a light? Here. Bring the camera, give me the camera. Are you seeing stuff up there? Yeah, give me the camera. Because I thought uh, I saw something up there when uh, we were doing the interview. Camera call. Yeah, doing the interview. I've seen a thing of light just crossed in front of me. And I heard a... That's the crawl space. It's a bad place. Are you doing that? Who's doing that? The... I heard that too. That you heard it? Just now you did it? No, I said I heard, I heard a... That place is so creepy up there. Who's up here? And I heard... When you guys, before you guys started doing the interview, I Josh. should be in the light. Trying no. to mess with us again? Who's up here? Don't like me talking about this story, huh? Should you make so that noise? So weird. I thought it sounded like something I heard that was boom. And that crawl space goes like all the way back and it goes really far out the way. It goes all the way over the boiler room, I believe. Do you want to like finish that, that up? Last few comments? Let's, let's finish up this interview. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, sure, I'll stand by the huge black, <laughs> not sure you'll, see, sure you'll stand by the hole next the to me. This is where you're going tonight. Well, this is where any of us is getting logged in tonight. So, all right, here's Josh. Here's your camera. Call, hey, bro, what's going on? All right. All right. Earlier, I was here for an investigation uh, a couple years ago. And they were given a tour, and a guy was telling a story about how before something happened to him, he had this, he smelled cigarette smoke, and that's the same exact room that we'd always smell in. She has had similarities in what actually yeah. happened in there. So, yeah, I mean, being fifth grade kids smelling cigarette smoke, I mean, at that time it really didn't seem like a big deal. Yeah. And then, like, as soon as, as, soon as he mentioned, smelling cigarettes in that room. I, I got goosebumps all over the place. I was like, whoa, that's cool, because that's the room we'd always smell in, too, so. It's always awesome that two different separate people yeah. actually experience the same paranormal experience. Do you think this place is haunted yourself? I do. This staircase here is actually where we had some awesome flashlight interaction. It was actually the first time I'd ever experienced the flashlight um, experience, um, but, uh, Basically set a twistable mag light flashlight on this step here and just, just enough so if you went over and tapped it, it turned on. A lot of people are skeptic, skeptical about this. We're very firm believers in it, um, especially after this experience. I set it down, walked away, and paid no attention to it. Completely ignored it and was talking to Megan and boom, the light turns on by itself. And I'm like, okay, well, that totally could have done it by itself. So I went over, turned it back off. 
decided to start asking questions and began with, you know, are you a male, are you a female, things like that. And it was just kind of fading in and out by itself, not really answering anything. So I started to get a little bit more direct and I said, um, it turned off and I said, I, wanna, I want you to turn that light back on. I'm going to count to five. When I get to five, I want that light to turn on as bright as it possibly can. I bent down in front of that light, I counted one, two, three, four, and right when I said five, I mean immediately, that baby came on just as bright as it could be. I count to five, and I want you to turn it back on full power. Use my energy. Just turn it on all the way, just right at once. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh, I've got major chills right now. Major, major chills. Two, three, four, five. We were doing an event one time and we were right under this down on the first floor and we hear like loud stomps like this right up in this area. So me and like three other guys, we like sneak out, we're hiding down at the bottom of the stairs. We can literally just hear her walking down this floor. We hear him stomp right up the steps, hear the door open to the third floor, shut. Then we can hear him walking along the third floor. And we, we come to the middle and it goes quiet. And we're like, I wonder, wonder where he's at now. And all of a sudden, right up on the third floor right above us. As I say it, where is he now? Stomps right above us. See this window over here? For, yeah, for almost 20 years, and that's originally why I came to the school. I would drive by there turning to go home, and I'd see a little girl just standing there, and she'd go like this. She'd oh, wave you to You see, like, which side of the window? Like right there. Side? So you would see like a little girl stare at you and just wave. Yeah. And that's originally what brought me to the school was that little girl. Creepy. Now I pulled up here about three months ago, called Nancy and said, let me in. There's somebody in the school because there was someone standing in that window. And we went all through the school, top to bottom, nothing. One main experience I've had was, uh, was in this room in here. We call this the breathing room, uh, especially when, when we first started doing things, uh, having investigations our own in here. Um, Jackie was up here in the front, and uh, I was sitting back here in these chairs. They were all facing forward. And um, Jackie had told the little girl, you know, that she had passed on, that she needed to, to go. Uh, and. Uh, at that time, I saw what, what looked like a light that came up beside me. And I know, it, I, I, I feel silly when I say it, but it felt like she passed through me. And at that exact same time, my sister, who was sitting in the desk right in front of me, looked up and saw a little girl pass by the window right here. And she had, um, she said she had a long frilly dress on and uh, white, shoes and patent leather shoes and little baby socks and, and uh, curly hair. And at the same time, as she saw that, another woman turned around and looked, and she heard a little girl giggle. We had an open investigation with guests here one night, and we had a woman, older woman, thrown backwards onto the floor, and we have it on film. And I knew there was something that wasn't right. It wasn't to the school. And I pulled her outside, made her take a deep breath, made sure she was okay, and said, tell me your story. When she was 20 years old, her husband at that time, they lived in the country, middle of winter, goes to their house, drags her out of bed. She's in her nightgown, barefooted, took her to an abandoned school and slit her throat and left her for dead. She crawled to the neighbors to get help. That's what saved her life. They could follow the trail of blood back to the school. And it was the first time she had walked into a school since that episode. So her energy, her adrenaline, 
was so high that she manifested a, a reenactment of being thrown to the floor by her ex-husband and having her throat slit. When I approached the property, I knew that there was something seriously wrong that had happened in that barn. And as, unfortunately, we had no bathroom at the time because nobody was here, so I had to find a place to go to the restroom. So I went back behind the barn, and as I went around the barn, I had to lean to go to the bathroom. So I leaned down like this, and when my back hit the, gr the barn, instantly I saw all the abuse and how they caged, basically caged up children in that barn. And I come up away from there and I turned around and I, lay, and I laid my hands on the barn, which I read. And I laid my hands on the barn like this and I'm like, oh my God, I could see the beatings, the abuse. The children were literally flipping caged in like wired things. And I, I started to cry and I thought, oh my God, this is, you know, these are children. A lot of people, there have been a lot of people who's had experiences in the stage area and everything. They say this area here is the most active, most haunted part of the school. When you're doing an investigation, make it very definitive. Anyone can get a beam contracting and, and expanding and it makes a pop when they ask for one, one knock on the wall. Ask for three knocks. Make it more definitive, where more energy has to be drawn mm -hmm. to be able to manifest and communicate. If you're using a ghost box, ask for a, a, a question that will require a complete sentence, because I can sit with a ghost box and pick out anything I want in one word answers. That's not definitive enough for me. Yeah. Think outside of the norm. Just because Ghost Hunters does it, our, our ghost adventures are Joe Blow from down the block, ghost team does it, does not mean that it's right for you. One of the most, I'd say one of the most legit things, so you know how like you'll experience something and you're part of your... Did you guys hear that? Yeah, what the, you hear that, Jess? That wasn't, was it Cody? No, it sounded like... Well, Cody's right back there. But, you know, countless ghost box out here, EVPs, um, walking, thumps, I mean, you name it, it happens here, so. And this is, third floor is where it's at, plain and simple. I mean, don't go, I mean, there's activity all throughout the school. But if you were to focus on one spot, this would be, this is the hot spot. This is the hot spot. I saw a shadow on the ground and I told Connor, we walked in, I had no idea where the light source was. We walked in, I walked over here, and where the light source is. Right here where your shadow is? The shadow, my shadow falls right where I found it, like there was something right here. Dude, we were just walking down the hallway, man. Your mic, your damn phone went off. Oh well. Okay. Alright man, you're good. Do you know my name? Yeah. Oh shit! That was a female. That was a female. What, what's your name? Johnson. 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 That's not a that's not a female's name. Uh that was a song. Are you are you are you a demon? Did you just put my wife? Because demons can change their voices and Imitate other things. Hold on, Josh. Are you flickering on and off my camera light? Are you doing that legitly? I'm pulling it, Cody. Josh. One's pulling the camera. Are you flickering my light on and off?
have an overnight here on Thursday. I'm excited for this. The first time over. It's almost like a footstep. You go on that side. There's something on down here in the gym. Dude, it sounds like a radio or something. Dude, I think I'm gonna take it. Maybe it's turned off. If you notice in the doorway where we heard the noises of what appears to sound like a radio playing, you will also notice what appears to be an orb shoot out of frame. If it was a bug, you would be able to notice its wings, and if it was dusk, the particles would drizzle down like snow. Is somebody in there? Somebody in there? No, we're not even kidding you. There was a radio playing in this fucking bathroom. Somebody in here? Jim? Jim, Nancy? Holy shit! What? Dude, there's nothing in there. Dude, Cody, you will not believe what just happened. Me and Josh legitly caught a radio in this room. There's no radio in this bathroom. Find one, Josh, quick. Alright, so right now, me and Josh, we're actually walking down here to gather some water and uh, the other camera that's ac actually out there and we legitly caught a freaking radio playing in here. There's no radio in this bathroom. Like, look around. There's no radio, dude. It was playing an old radio tone, like legit. Is there somebody out here? Dude, check these other rooms, dude. Look for a freaking ring. Dude, there's rooms in here. Josh, cut in here, dude. Don't leave me in this fucking room. Look for a radio in here. There's no radio, dude. There's another room, dude. I know, but let's check. Make sure there's a radio anywhere in this room, dude. There's nothing. Dude, Cody's back at the room doing freaking. Media dumb, dude. There's dude, not. Sir, say, well, can you hear me? Like, you start talking and they just fade it out. You, I, I, I guarantee you, we have to get that right there. We should put that in there. Dude, there's no sound. That thing doesn't record sound. We should get that. Oh, fuck. Hold on, dude. Oh my god, there's a fucking radio. Right here. I just got chills. Is this unplugged in? 
Oh my god, dude, it's not plugged in. Yeah, but it was playing over there, though. I know it was playing over there, but there's a radio right here. I know, that's creepy. What the hell? Oh my god. Did you have that? Dude, there's. We found a radio in that room in there, but we heard it from coming over that room. We're gonna go and do a spirit box session here in the boiler room with uh, Cody and Josh and I. And we're gonna see if we can't get any kind of voices of any responses of any spirits that are actually in this boiler room. Or maybe even have in the school that want to speak with us in this room. Uh, um, we have the uh, PSB7 spirit box, which scans frequencies of radio stations at a high rate that anything that comes through is jarbled. No clear voices should be able to come. We're gonna start on 200 milliseconds, so it's barely on a radio station for a second. This ain't even on a radio sta station for a second, so let's see what we can do from here, see if we can communicate. <clears throat> We got it going. Is there somebody in this room with us? No. <gasps> 15 minutes into our spirit box session and we captured no further voices until we captured what we believed to be was a little girl. So you're just gonna talk and leave once? That's all you're gonna say? Go home. Say go home? Make me go home. Do you want us to turn off all the lights? Why don't you push Josh? You touched him. <laughs> push Josh if you're so big. Are you a little girl? <gasps> oh. It said yes. Oh. It said yes. What is your name, little girl? Can you say your name again, please? What we were about to capture was completely unexpected. Can you hold my hand? You are? He said I am. I don't feel it. Do you like us three boys? When we leave here, when we leave here, are you going to follow us home? Dude, so sad to come without a so. Do you want to follow us home? Who are you going to follow home? <gasps> we drove eight and a half hours to a town once called Farrar, Iowa, now Maxwell, Iowa, in search of where children are believed to still roam the halls of Farrar Elementary. What we found in our interviews and the things that happened to us during our investigation led us to believe that the children who once went to this school Class is still in session.